After going through um, a cycle of IVF, I knew that I was gonna do everything within my power to make sure that this was the best pregnancy. One night, I woke up and the bed was wet. And I thought I had just had a simple accident. And it, honestly, it wasn't until I was in the shower trying to clean up and there was still fluid being released. And it was at that point that I yelled out to my husband to, you know, that something was wrong. So we uh, rushed to the hospital. They go through all their drills and they tell us her water broke and that she's gonna have to, uh, they're gonna try to maintain the pregnancy there. But at 22 weeks, there was nothing they could do. And, you know, for us, that was a major blow because we were under the impression that all the hospitals could help everybody do everything. At 24 weeks and five days, I got an infection. They decided that I was gonna have to have an emergency C-section. So Q was delivered bright and early that morning, weighing one pound, seven ounces. Uh, meaning basically it was about 16 weeks early. Later that morning, hours later even, the lactation consultant brought me a picture of him. And so I saw my son for the very first time on a four by six picture. He was 12 inches long and his eyes were shut. Of course, his lungs were an issue. So because his lungs were so immature, um, they did administer surfactant. The surfactant helps with the elasticity in the lungs. And so for that, we are definitely, definitely thankful for the Marchadons. A few days after he was born, we were delivered with the blow of him having a, a grade four intraventricular hemorrhage or brain bleed. Expectations were set that he would may not walk, he may not talk, um, he may be, you know, very dependent, you know, long long term. They just didn't know. Uh, it was one of our worst days. But the doctor said that, uh, in, in so many words, God doesn't mean for babies to be born this soon. So there's a pretty good chance, and, and I hated the phrase pretty good chance, that he may not go home. I prayed and prayed, and like, God, if you'll just let me hold him for Mother's Day, that's all I want. And that particular year, Mother's Day came the Friday before Mother's Day. And that was the first time we got to do kangaroo care, which was really, really hold and cradle him. And it was the most beautiful thing for us. Our NICU journey was a total of 122 days, which is roughly four months. But once he got home, he was no longer a NICU baby for me. He was our newborn. We basically turned this place into our own little NICU. We had follow-up appointments with the ophthalmologist who was monitoring his uh, recovery from the ROP surgery. We had, of course, with the pediatrician. We had a follow-up with the neurosurgeon who was following his, um, his bleed. As he's gotten older, we've had to include feeding therapy and speech therapy. Q doesn't like to eat. He'd rather do something else. And after several therapies, we finally was able to get a diagnosis of he had oral motor delays. He is almost three years, three years old and he weighs 23 pounds. As far as parenting goes, I could probably be a little bit more strict. The way I see it is just every day that he's here is a day that I didn't think he would have. So I, I kind of give him a little bit more leeway. So Q was born in 2011. And two years later, my younger sister delivered her child at 24 weeks as well. So you hear the statistics, one in eight. Well, in my family, we've been that one in eight twice. Samaya was born at Methodist as well. We were on the Nikki roller coaster again. Uh, July the 8th, Samaya earned her wings. We love you, Samaya. And know that you're on this journey with us and we carry you in our hearts every day. The March of Dimes helps all babies, not just babies born prematurely. Through initiatives like Healthy Babies Are Worth the Wait, just educating 
um, families or, or moms that reaching that 40 week deadline is, is golden. Uh, I would not want anyone to ever have to experience this at, at any point in their lives because it is something that can be prevented and with sponsorship and corporate uh, dollars or donors, we can find a, a way to make sure that no one has to go through this again. Our family decided to participate in March for Babies because we wanted all babies to have a, a fair start. The cause is very near and dear to our hearts. We do it to honor Q and Samaya also. We want you to join us on April the 12th as we March for Babies, giving every baby a healthy start that they deserve.